imagine our future, not just the next decade, but centuries and millennia from now. What kind of world will we leave for the countless generations to come? Every decision we make today casts a long shadow over the future. In this video, we'll explore why our actions today are so important for the survival and prosperity for humanity for thousands of years. I'm Barbara Albert, co-CEO of 100% Renewables, a consultancy specializing in helping our clients to decarbonize. And today we'll explore why our actions today are so important for the survival and prosperity of humanity. Much of my thinking has been influenced by William McCaskill and the philosophy of long-termism, which argues that future people matter just as much as we do today. It's a perspective that compels us to consider how our actions might shape the world for those who come after us. Consider this. Human life began over 300,000 years ago in Africa. Agriculture is just 12,000 years old and the Industrial Revolution started a mere heartbeat ago in our long history. How many more years will we get to live as a species? If we are wise enough to avoid catastrophic events, we will get to live another 700,000 years. Because 1 million years is the lifetime of a typical mammalian species. So looking back at those 300,000 years of human existence, how many people do you think have lived before you? Say one person you see here stands for 10 billion people. Right now, there are about 100 billion people who have lived before us. But what about the future? How many people will come after us? Each one of the 100 billion people who lived before us contributed to the world we inhabit today. A planet that, despite challenges, still brims with life and opportunities. Each figure you see represents 10 billion people, generations of humanity, layer upon layer, building the foundation we stand on. But let's look forward. What about the future? Imagine if our species continues as long as a typical mammalian lifespan of 1 million years. Watch as more figures appear, filling up the space, row by row. These are the future generations potentially adding up to nearly 80 trillion people. Yes, that's our potential future, outnumbering us by an astonishing ratio of 10,000 to 1. Each of those figures represents a future filled with hopes, dreams and lives that we have the power to affect with our actions today. The decisions we make now, the paths we choose to follow, and the legacies we decide to leave behind will shape the lives of all those who might come after us. To truly grasp this scale, I'd have to show you this slide not once, not twice, but 350 times to account for them all. If you consider all these future lives, how many carbon emissions would you want us to emit into the atmosphere? We can still shape the course of history, but soon, will exceed safe climate thresholds. In the past decades, greenhouse gas emissions have been increasing. The main driver of long-term warming is the total cumulative emissions of greenhouse gases over time. Unfortunately, we didn't act with the urgency back then with which we should have acted. Let's hear it in the words of Antonio Guterres, UN Secretary General. Climate change is here, it is terrifying, and it is just the beginning. The era of global warming has ended, the era, the era of global boiling has arrived. The air is unbreathable, the heat is unbearable, and the level of fossil fuel profits and climate inaction is unacceptable. Each time we drive a car, turn on a light, watch a show or fly, we add more heat to our already warming planet. Think of the Earth's atmosphere as a bathtub that's quickly filling up with water. If we don't turn off the tap now, soon we'll be left with an overflowing disaster that no small measure can fix. Natural processes will return CO2 concentration to pre-industrial levels only after hundreds of thousands of years. And the effects of climate change will get worse over time. Most likely our sea levels will rise by 75 centimeters by the end of the century. However, over 10,000 years, sea levels will rise by 10 meters. Over the longer term, the world will look very, very different from today. It's up to us to make a change now. The world needs to halve emissions every decade by 2050 from a 2020 baseline, which accounts to a year-on-year -year reduction rate of 7%. As a simple rule of thumb, 
It can be applied to countries, organizations and cities. Halving our emissions every decade is necessary on a global basis. If we apply the lens of a just transition, then wealthier nations and organizations should be even more ambitious and see the halving of emissions every decade as the minimum standard that should be achieved. The first halving will be a big challenge, but it will also be the easiest to do. Once we have squeezed the easy carbon out of the economy, we'll be left with harder to abate emissions that require more work to be eliminated. Today, I'd like to offer four reasons for hope. The first reason of hope is environmental activism. In 2015, the landmark Paris Agreement was reached. The adoption of this agreement sent a clear signal that we must reach net zero emissions by 2050 to avoid catastrophic climate change. As society shifts to a net zero economy and reduces its reliance on fossil fuels, our economy and existing systems will transform enormously. More and more countries around the world are committing to net zero emissions. Australia is committed to net zero by 2050 and a minus 43% reduction by 2030, targets which are both inadequate and almost impossible to reach. And more and more organizations are committing to science-based targets and to a net zero goal. Moreover, investors, regulators, as well as consumers and employees are now increasingly demanding that companies should not only be good stewards of capital, but also of natural and social capital and have the necessary governance framework in place to support this. So how can you be a part of the transition? You might wonder if one person can truly make a difference. We all have our own problems, insecurities and limitations. But people like you and me decided to shape the history they were a part of, and some succeeded. You don't have to be an extraordinary historical figure to enact change. School children can do it. Ordinary people can do it, like Plastic Man in Senegal. Remember, every great movement was started by someone who decided they could not wait any longer. You can be that person, whether it's influencing policy, switching to cycling or walking, or adopting a sustainable diet, your actions count. Let's not wait for others to lead the way. If not you, then who? And if not now, when? Together, we can ensure that our legacy is not one of ruin, but one of renewal and hope for the 80 trillion who are counting on us. Let's work together to shape a future we are proud to pass on to the next generations. If you're passionate about reducing emissions, building a sustainable world and making a real impact, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Join us for more insights, practical steps and updates on how we can transform our future. Like this video, share it with your network and hit the notification bell so you never miss an opportunity to be part of that change. Thanks for watching.